Welcome to the video. This is the Tour de France 2022 bikes. We've got Performance Police here. This is the first time. Did you? We're in cycling news, by the way. This is the first time. Did you know the UCI has banned weighing bikes at the Tour de France? They no longer have to weigh bikes. The UCI weight tester guy and girl cancelled because all the bikes are so heavy these days. Let's have a look here. All right, let's have a flick scroll through at these heavy machines. And this will be the fastest Tour de France ever. Ever. This will be the fastest Tour de France ever. That's my hunch. Okay. And there's a few reasons for that. It's the aero heavy bikes. Not. <laughs> the, the nudes out there. The nudes out there, man. It's just, it, the bikes are aero, so we're going faster up the hills because the bikes are more aero. Um, I'll tell you what's going on, but anyway, you might be able to handle the truth. Anyway, let's have a look here. This is this is sad, all right? This is sad. This is a, f I mean, for me, it's sad. This is the first time for me, my in my first world problem world, that I've looked at the Tour de France, and I'm like, I don't want any single bike. Literally, Specialized could pay me $100,000 a year to ride the SL7 and push it on my YouTube and socials, and I'd say, thanks, but no thanks. Give it to someone else who would, who would sell on a soul. You know, I would literally... There's not a single bike here. Look, I mean, look at that thing. You know? I just, I, the, the bikes don't look cool. I mean, the, that paint job looks cool, but then I look at the, the, I'm like, hang on, why do I have, why am I riding my gravel bike in a road race? Okay? This is, this is just me. This is my first real problem over here. Like, I just see rotors, man. I still use, look at the spokes, man. I just feel the drag on that straight away. Here we've got to finally got a rim brake bike, but even Ineos, Team Sky, they've cancelled rim and gone disc, so. I look at these bikes, I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah, no thanks, heavy, slow, non-aero, ugh, fappy, seat post, TCR. Have you seen Bike Exchange locking up their 12-speed Durace brakes and just like almost crashing? Have you seen that at Stage 13 yesterday? What was going on there? Um, you know, S-Works, SL7, ugh. I mean, I've, I've ridden these bikes, you know, I've ridden a lot of these bikes, especially the SL7, S-Works tarmac, and it's a disgrace. This one looks cool. This this looks cool. This Colnago looks cool because you can't really see the rotors on there. And you oh, then you see the rotors. And, oh, is this hang? Is this a cyclocross bike? Oh, is this a gravel bike? Oh, it's a road bike. With, why has it got disc brakes on it? I didn't disc brakes my road bike. But anyway, let's go back in time. Let's go to 2012, 10 years ago. Now, I've ridden most of these bikes, and these bikes kick ass. You know, I've got a lot of big, huge bike collection. I buy and sell bikes all the time. I work on people's bikes every single day as a professional bike mechanic. And uh, we're going to go here. Look at this, Savella S5. These ones go all right. The seat post would slip a bit, but put a bit of cricket bat tape in there, you're good to go. All right. These bikes are so much lighter. And almost all these bikes had to have weights added to them, especially the Cannondales. Look at this bike. Look at this. Damn, remember that colorway? Look at that. That's a road race bike. Amazing stuff. You know, look at these. The R R5 CA, RCA. Superly expensive. Oh, made in China, made, or made in America, not that it matters, but yeah, the bikes back then were so much better, man, you know what I mean, oh man, they're so good, look at those C50 of tubs on there, that Durace 11 speed DR2, <sighs> looking good, 2012 was the first Tour de France with the 11 speed Durace, you know, and these bikes are just easy to work on, mechanics dream, the mechanics love working on them, they're easy to set up, I don't know how people ride Physique Arione saddles, Physique Arione saddle, if I had to ride a Physique Arione saddle, I reckon my, my, my schlong would shrink four inches, you know? <laughs> I don't have ten, 10 inches left, but <laughs> seriously, I don't know how the physique... If you don't like cycling, check what saddle you have, and if you have a physique Arione, that's maybe the cause why you don't like cycling. El Ace 7900, the power meter, the 7900 chain rings, and a 7-8000 crank arm. And the bikes back then were just... They were so nice, man. They were so nice. External battery there. You know, like, it just the good old days, man. The good old days where you could really get that adjustment of your bow and stem. Unlike this one-piece stuff today where you're just forced in this position. <laughs> um, you know, I love being able to flip my stem one and one, put a shorter stem on there, put a longer stem on there, just have that customizing and change my bar angle and everything. And, uh, you know, you can't really do that with these bikes these days as much, can you? You know? This, that saddle, that saddle for me looks mad uncomfortable but saddle's personal preference okay saddle is personal preference find the saddle you like they look like a 197 crank arm length it's probably adam hansen's bike look at that you know just easy easy cables through there no worries you know cam pack 
11 speed super record just works man super light super cheap these days you know just great stuff great stuff you know the good old days mate the good old days and if you work on bikes as a prof like a professional mechanic like myself you appreciate these bikes how well engineered they are and these new bikes it's like you being a car mechanic all this all this internal wires and cr just, it's just yeah just faffing around man faffing around tubular there we go you know these are great wheels back in the day the free hub's a bit crap though there we go they've got a scott uh foil i've got one of these recently there we go that's an, these are really nice bikes the scott foil 2012 incredible bike man incredible bike looks like peter sagan's green machine super six that looks like custom geometry doesn't it look how long that top tube is i'm going to suspect that that's not a look at that short stack height and long top tube i'm yeah, it's almost like a 70 almost looks like a 72.5 seat that's tube angle which is pretty, pretty interesting but yeah it works for peter um but i like that color that's a beautiful color in the shram shram red Looks like 11 speed there, but on a force cassette. That's interesting. But I guess, yeah, that's why they have to run the force cassette because the red cassette would put the bike too light. Put the bike too light. So add a bit of weight. Actually, no, this would be a 2012. I would say this would be 10 speed still, potentially. But these are really light shifters. Really, really light shifters. Um, the Gen 2 10s or the Gen 1 11 speed. Beautiful bike. And I know exactly how that bike would ride because I have it. Um, you know, fantastic fantastic the stuff just oh man these bikes have dreamed this is the gen 2 those brakes are pretty decent man if you want to adjust them you put an 8 mil there around the pivot and you can just uh tune the angles of the pads very easily so tip there williers you know the good old days man the good old days are the best product ever and that's why i laugh when people say oh you know it's doing right you're living in the past mate you're living in the past like, you haven't ridden these bikes man if you've ridden these bikes you'll know what i'm talking about that i am speaking 100 percent truth that the 2012 tour de france bikes are night and days way better than the 2022 tour de france bikes there's not a single there's not a single tour de france rider who would prefer a 2022 roast uh, tour de france bike than their 2020 12 2020, 2012, 2020, 2012. Then they're 2012, you know, bike. It's just, you know what I mean? It's, it's insane, man. Look look at this. Look how light these things are. This canyon would have definitely had to have weights added to it. And it's got 10 speed dial too in there. It's just, you know, like, these, man, these bikes, these bikes are really what cycling's about. You know, like, they ride so nice. That's quite interesting with the, the spaces under the stem, but then you got a negative degree of stem. That's interesting. Why don't you just put a, uh, cut the spaces out there and put a I don't know but I guess maybe they want to flip the stem at some point anyway, anyway but you know like these Canyon Ultimates are incredible so light man so stiff so powerful Scott Foil incredible bike back in the day the new Scott Foil it's a joke man that's an absolute joke of a bike in my opinion you know just just junk man it looks cool it looks, it looks like bat bike but just junk man just junk Stuart O'Grady there in the background um, it's just Stuart O'Grady's bike. So I'm not sure. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. This one. This could actually. actually this could be the bike sitting in my freaking garage right now. I'll have to double check on that. But uh, I'll have to double check on that. They look the same, don't they? You know, just easy going bikes, man. Look at that. You know, two hundred eight number two hundred eight. Let's find out the number who that was. Damn, these bikes are good. I was riding this. I was riding this exact bike the other day. You know, easy to adjust. Anyway, we're just going through, reminiscing here, the good old days, man. Like you know, I mean, like look at that old beer, mate. Look at that. Just and and this lightweight. These wheels are so light. There's no rubbing rotors. There's no faffing around. There's no. Oh, here we go. The S. This now these were the best tarmacs ever. The SL fours, back in the day. You know what I mean? Oh, look at that. That, that that is a sick bike, mate. That would those ride incredible, man. Incredible. Okay. Compare this to the SL7. Oh, mate, mate. Literally, literally, every single S Works rider today in the World Tour. If I came along, or me and Tinkoff came along at Bezos, and we had a truck full of you know SL4s, and we're like, hey guys, throw your SL7s over the cliff, and we'll give you an SL4 from 2012, brand new, dead stock. Mate, all these SL7s are getting thrown over the cliff, mate. 
and riders are getting on there and their smiles would come back in their face like, yeah, man, this is a sick race bike. None of this bullshit road disc, sloppy, heavy junk that flexes. Maybe you can make a 6.8 kilo world tour bike, disc brakes, but the ride quality is going to be shit. It's going to be so flexy under power. The, when it breaks, it's going to just distort. You're going to have brake distortion because the discs on the skinny tire and the minimal spokes. Look at look how many spokes on this front wheel. So aero, man. You know? Again, disc for dirt, rim for road. If you want the best feeling road bikes, you can't go class these. The SLs for Tarmax and the, just the rim brake versions, man. Any that like, oh, look at that, man. Again, using a force cassette because if they use the SRAM Red, it would be too light, okay? And it also saves them money as well. The force is a little bit more durable. But yeah, like, yeah, I mean, this, this bike's definitely under 6.8, would have had weights to it. You know, just, yeah, amazing. A one piece bar and stem. Not a fan of that. Just hard to get that perfect adjustment. But uh, these are the bikes, man. These are the bikes. The Argos Crew, what are they riding? Foils, wasn't it? Felts. Felts. You know, that's a nice bike. Kunda Court. Yeah, I've got this on these Felt F1s. Nice bike, man. Nice bike. Anyway, that's the deal. You know, look at that. These are a bit of a pain in the ass. They work really, really good until they die, and then you now you can't get spares for them. And they, they only work with other 10 speed Duro DR2 derails, unfortunately. But. I mean, yeah, it's a very, very nice setup. When it's working, it's working perfect. But if your derailleur dies, 10-speed Durace, then you're up shit creek. I've got this exact frame and a really nice bike. Um, Felt F1s. Very nice. Anyway, that's the deal. You know what I mean? Look at that. Just lingering, mate. Just perving on these bikes. You know, just the good old days. Shram Red could sit on there. Just, yeah, quota. Man, and look at this junk. Look at this. You know what I mean? <laughs> this, oh man. Look, look, look at all that metal, you know what I mean? On a road bike. For road for the Tour de France. For the Tour de France where every second matters. And safety should be a concern. And the UCI was like, yeah, hydro disc brakes and twenty five mil tires, hundred PSI, no worries, guys. Yeah, Yo, you're in hospital with a broken femur? Oh that's that's a shame. That's a shame. I mean look at this. I mean this right here's got some uh, so he's got some scabs in his leg. Was that because his disc brakes locked up and he crashed out? Disc brakes offer poor modulation when using a road race tire because they're generally sort of on and off. They grab too easily. If you've got a really fat tire, it doesn't matter too much. It doesn't matter when, the, when your disc brakes grab because of the heat expansion of the rotors, disc calipers, etc. But when you've got a road race tire and you're in the Tour de France and that precision, you know, razor edge, road discs, very, very dangerous.